Now, as we move into three-dimensional quantum mechanics, you'll notice that we are using spherical coordinates. This is something that, you know, long ago or some at some point in your career you, you've gone over. Uh, but I was, when I first experienced this, I, I remember I was a little bit rusty on it. And so something I wanted to go over, just a little bit more of the background. Specifically, I want to sort of show where the, the gradient in spherical coordinates comes from and also the Laplacian, which is the gradient squared. Most books don't cover this. Uh, so you can think about this as an extra topic, but I think it would be useful. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you these three equations. Uh, also, I should say you can find different places online of ways to do this. So you can kind of find your favorite one, but I'm going to go through what I think is my favorite way to, to relate these things. Um, and so here are our unit vectors. So we're relating the Cartesian x, y, and z to the spherical r, theta, and phi. And, I'm, and uh, with these ones here, we're just going to sort of show how you can justify those. And so here, uh, let's look at the r hat one. Okay, and so here's my picture uh, of our typical Cartesian coordinate system, something like this here. And so this would be my vector, my r hat vector. And of course we know that in, in physics at least, we generally use a situation kind of like this here where my theta uh, is measured over here. Let's make that a little clearer. And my phi is measured down there from the x-axis. So theta from the z-axis and x or, or phi from the x-axis. And so let's just do something here. Where let's Okay, take this thing and let's just imagine that I've moved my r-hat vector uh, so that it's exactly on top of the y hat vector. All right, and so what should happen is that this equation should give me uh, what I expect. And so let's just go through and make sure that that works. So here, if I did that, then I'd be using the particular case where theta is equal to pi over two and phi is equal to pi over two. So basically all these guys here are gonna be uh, evaluated at pi over two. And of course we know that a cosine pi over two is zero, so that one would go away. Uh, that one as well. Sine pi over two is one, and so we get exactly what we want, the y hat. So you can play around with this a little bit, convince yourself that it works for all the different axes. You can also do a similar thing uh, for the theta and the, and the phi if you want. Um, and so uh, once we have the r, so before we had the uh, r hat, theta hat, phi hat in terms of x, y, and z, well we can also invert that uh, and set these up here uh, so that we have the x, y, and z in terms of the r, theta, and the phi. All right, so, so once we have these, then what we can do is just go back uh, to our definition of the gradient. So here's the gradient in Cartesian coordinates. And again, we want to kind of show how we get the gradient in spherical coordinates. And so what I'm going to do is take these equations we just found here and plug them in. All right, so literally I'm just plugging in these last uh, three equations uh, in over here. Uh, into uh, what I have for the gradient. Okay, and so I'm going to go through, maybe check, make sure you like everything that I did. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this is that same equation, and I'm just going to sort of correct it, or just sort of move things around so that I group the r hat terms, the theta hat terms, and the phi hat terms. So see here, this is uh, the r hat term from this first piece, so it's uh, sine theta cosine phi times d d d x. This one here is sine theta sine phi times d d y. And then down here we have this term, the r hat term, cosine theta uh, d by d z partial derivative. So you can check the other two, uh, but I'm essentially just going through and writing this out uh, in terms of the spherical coordinates. And so now we come here and we can look at this and sort of start to analyze this. And so let's just look purely here at the r hat part of this. So this is sort of a, a key part. So, so again, I've just written uh, what we had before as our r hat component uh, of the gradient. Uh, and here are the relationships I have between x, y, and z, and then r, theta, and phi. So these are the, the relationships we have. And so what I'm going to argue to you is that what I have written here looks like this right here. Okay, or, or is this right here, if I just sort of think about it in the right way. And so let's look here. So let's look at this derivative here of dx dr. So this is my relationship of x versus uh, as the other functions. And so if I take dx versus dr, what do I get? Well, I get sine theta cosine phi, because you just if it's a pretty simple relationship with respect to r. And so that pops right into here. So dx dr, and if you look here, it's the same thing for the other two, right? Everything times the r is a sine theta sine phi, and this is the cosine. And so I have this right here, 
All right, and now what I want to convince you of is that this is equal to r hat times the partial derivative d by dr. And how do we do that? Well, this is the kind of thing that, you know, I imagine you might be a little bit rusty on, but let's just remind you uh, of these things you've done in, in one-dimensional calculus. And so a lot of times you'll use what's called the chain rule to sort of flip back and forth between derivatives of, of certain uh, variables. And so what you may have done is something like this. This is how I remember doing the chain rule back in the day. Right? And so it's a way to sort of, if you want to uh, relate the derivative of d by dx to the derivative of d by du, you do it by using the derivative of du dx. And the way I used to kind of think about it is it's sort of like these du's are canceling out. Well, now that we're in three-dimensional calculus, all right, so if I want to do the same thing, what I've got to do is because r can depend on three different things, x, y, and z, I've got to have three different of these pieces. And the key point, or a key point, is that when you do this, these are all partial derivatives. And so if we go through and write this out as such, So again, this is sort of like, the, again, this is the three-dimensional chain rule. The analogy would be this other chain rule that we've used before. And again, you can sort of see here that the, the dx's, were in a sense, sort of cancel, leaving d by dr. The dy sort of cancel, leaving with d by dr. And the same thing with the z. And that is exactly what we have over here. All right? So if I take this thing we just found, right, this, this big, ugly relationship uh, between the, uh, the, the gradient and all these different factors, I can simplify it a great deal uh, like so. And if you take the other components, you'll find the same thing. Now, they're a little bit trickier, so I'm going to ask that you work through these yourself. I started all the work here, okay? But you can go through and, again, find what these derivatives would be from these definitions. And in this case, in order to make the derivatives to work, you're going to add some extra pieces. So it won't be quite as simple as before, Okay, but what will happen is that this guy here will end up equaling, all right, when you write theta hat times all this junk, uh, using the same sort of idea of a, of a chain rule, you can write theta hat 1 over r d by d theta. All right, so definitely stop and make sure that makes sense to you. And then I can do the same thing with the, the phi hat. That's a little bit simpler. There's only two pieces. Uh, and so when it all comes out, Again, um, here are the two derivatives. I'm just going to try to relate those derivatives uh, to pieces over here. And when I do that, I come out with uh, phi hat. This should be a phi hat, so I'll just make it a little bit better. Uh, phi hat times 1 over r sine theta d by d phi. And so just to, just to be a little bit more, give some more, a little bit more clarity, just to kind of show how this would work. So if I can rewrite this down here. So this is, you know, equal to the phi, so equal to phi hat. Uh, so what you're doing is you're multiplying by like an r sine uh, th uh, theta and then on top by an r sine theta. So you're doing both of those in order to get this piece r sine theta so you can have this derivative piece. So I've got to multiply by 1 over r sine theta. And then this piece here, remember there's the, this negative sign becomes dx, d, d phi, like so. And so then this still then the d by dx. And then plus from this piece over here, 1 over r sine theta. And then that derivative gives me dy, d phi. d by dy. And if you pull out the 1 over r sine theta, this again gives you uh, your, your chain rule for the d by d phi. And so this leads us to, to our first sort of intermediate step, the gradient uh, in terms of spherical coordinates. And so it's a little bit more complicated and we end up getting uh, these extra pieces in here, again, because this is a, a more complicated uh, system than just the Cartesian system. So this is our, our first thing we're looking for. And now what we want to do is I want to find the Laplacian, which we'll sometimes write as uh, the gradient squared. And so it's really taking the, the, the gradient and dotting it with itself. Now, in general, in Cartesian coordinates, dot products are pretty easy. But here it's a little bit trickier, and I'll try to explain why. And that's because these actual unit vectors here are going to depend on the variables or some of the variables we're talking about. So let's look here. 
So here's again, we, we, we put this out uh, earlier. Uh, so we can see here that, that uh, you know, r hat is a function of theta and phi. And in fact, all of these guys are a function of theta and phi, uh, where, where phi hat is only a function of phi. And so we can't simply uh, just take that uh, unit vector and have it slide on through. And so here's again this dot product we're trying to do. And so here is I'm going to argue the terms we come out with. And so I want to go through and sort of talk about a few of these and then uh, show you how we're doing this. And so, so you can imagine here that so if I take this guy dotted with this here. Okay, so one way to look at that is when you take this r hat times here. Okay, so the r hat, so you can imagine that, that what you're doing really is you're saying r hat d by dr times r hat d by dr. And so because you're taking this derivative, you've got to do this technically as a chain rule. You've got to, you know, take the derivative r hat times d by dr and then take r hat times the derivative of d by dr. Now in this case, all of the unit vectors, right, we, we just talked about this, uh, do not depend on r. So, you, so one term just automatically goes to zero and what you'll end up with is this term where you have r hat dotted r hat and then the second derivative of this here. So that would be the, you know, the pieces you would sort of expect from the dot product if you have a lot of experience of that from the Cartesian coordinates. And so you're left with this piece right here. Um, and then there is no uh, other piece of that. Now over here, let's look at this other one. So now let's take this uh, dotted with this right here. So let me just write that out. I'm not going to go through all of these different pieces. We just want to kind of show you the flavor of how this works. And so if I'm taking this piece, I'm sort of dotting this. Okay, so you can think about these as magnitudes. So this dotted with uh, what's inside here, theta hat 1 over r d by d theta. And so I'll get two pieces. I'll get a theta hat that'll be dotted with a theta hat. So I'm just then taking the derivative of this guy over here. And so that'll leave me with a 1 over r squared and the second derivative d by d theta. Now, but I've got to have plus this other piece. Uh, and here I'll just sort of write it uh, this way where I'm taking the derivative d by d theta of theta hat, because again, that can depend on theta. We're gonna go through and show you how you figure that out in a second, um, like this here. And so then I've tried to draw all these terms. So this one here, theta hat dot theta hat is just one, so that would be that term reflected right there. And then this piece here, so it's a d theta hat uh, d, uh, d theta, and I believe that piece uh, is right over here. Okay, and so I've kept all the pieces in here that we need to keep in, uh, and so you, you should probably go through and just check that all these pieces are here, but now that, that I've sort of showed you the picture, we can kind of see where they're coming from. We're going to go through and try to d uh, deal with all these different terms. Okay, so now here's back to these relationships we had, and so here's how you can determine uh, what we're actually talking about when it comes to taking the derivative of these unit vectors. So just to pick one out of a hat, here's the derivative with respect to phi of theta hat. So you take the theta hat here and take the derivative. So here the cosine turns into a negative sign. Over here the sine turns into a cosine and this piece of course does not depend on uh, phi. And so you got this kind of group here and so what I can do is look at this and say okay I'm going to pull out that cosine theta, and what am I left with? I'm left with negative uh, x hat times sine of phi plus y hat cosine of phi, which you can see over here is just phi hat. And so if I go through and do that, then I get that that derivative is phi hat times cosine theta. So we see this thing that what's going to happen is we're going to end up with a different uh, unit vector. So that dot product that we're doing, right, you typically would say, oh, well, well, if you're taking the dot product of something that isn't the same, it could actually change. Now, I won't do all of these for you, but I think uh, that should set you up pretty good. And so I would definitely stop here and double check all of these. Uh, but these are then going to be the key to setting this up for us and to see where these sort of extra pieces uh, that we have in our Laplacian come from. And so let's look. So here's uh, my uh, gradient dotted with itself. And so let's just start looking at this here. So so one thing that I showed from before, is, or that you can show, again, just this, this relationship over here, okay, is that the theta derivative of phi hat is zero. 
And so if we look here, we find the one that has the theta derivative of uh, phi hat. So like right here, so this derivative times that, okay, so, so what's happening here is when I take this derivative, I have to be careful of the derivative of, uh, of uh, that guy and the, and the derivative of this guy here. And so there'll be two terms coming from here. So first of all, when I take the derivative of this guy, it just turns out to be zero, so that piece goes away. Now, when I take the derivative of the other piece, okay, that will be something, and so we gotta consider that, but that's not gonna affect this guy here, and so you're still gonna have theta dotted with phi hat, theta hat dotted with phi hat. So this whole term here will end up giving us nothing. Uh, and so let's look over here, here's another one, D, uh, phi of phi hat, so that's the one over here, uh, that leaves us with a term that's r hat and theta hat. And so in this particular picture here, right, what I'm doing is when, when I multiply these two pieces together, okay, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking this derivative, well, I come out of it with an r hat and a theta hat, well, I'm still got to dot that with that phi hat. And so that comes out again being zero. There'll be no additional terms added from that piece over there. Um, and then similarly, d, uh, theta of, of theta hat, okay, which would be this picture right here, gives me negative r hat. And so again, I'm still got to dot those two unit vectors together. So that gives us no contribution as well. Um, and so, so that basically cleans this up a, a lot for us um, in, in doing this. And just, just to, to note too that, you know, so this piece here, uh, this came from, you know, dotting the two phi hat pieces together. Okay, and so when I take the derivative of the other bunch, Okay, I'm left with this term here. So these are our three terms that come from maybe the more traditional dot product. Okay, when you're not worried about uh, the fact that you can actually take the derivative of those um, unit vectors. And so our last pieces work out to be like this. And so we can show now that we can go through and get the Laplacian that we expect. All right, and so our last step, we've got a couple terms here to go through. And so let's go through them piece by piece. So here's uh, these other derivatives that we found, so d by d phi of theta hat, which would be, this guy right here is uh, phi hat cosine theta. So basically this little piece here is going to give me uh, that relationship. So we write out what we have for the, the, the two uh, dot products there. And so we've got, again, so these pieces are sort of the ones that we've been carrying along with us since we first took this dot product, and now let's add these pieces. So now this turns into uh, phi hat times cosine theta. So the phi hat dotted with that will give us one. And so I'll have uh, I'll have that term of cosine theta over r sine theta. Another factor of one over r d by d theta. So if I clean this up a little bit. I can write that as just uh, downscares of r squared d by d theta. So, so I've taken care of that term, so I can underline that. Now, over here, uh, d theta of r hat, this guy over here is just equal to theta hat. So then this theta hat here, at this point, will all come out. And so and we'll get another term here of 1 over r, and so these two pieces will uh, d by dr. And our final piece, so that's taking care of that guy, is now this one over here. And so d phi of r hat gives me phi hat sine theta. And so basically this is going to be phi hat sine theta, so this gives me plus, and again when it's phi hat, those two will dot together to be one. And so if I write all this down here, one over r sine theta, that piece, the piece I just gave me is going to give me a sine theta there times d by dr. And so if I clean this up a little bit, we're going to find that we have uh, the actual equation that our textbooks have, and so that'll be good for us. And it's basically just the way they organize it at this point here. So this is just, now here I have 1 over r d by dr here these signs will cancel, and so what I get from here is a 2 over r d by dr. And our textbooks will generally write it you know, in a lot of different ways, uh, but a, a really common way that I've seen uh, people write it will be something kind of like this here. So 1 over r squared uh, d by dr r squared 
d by dr. And so what this is, this is a term that includes this piece and this piece, because when you take this derivative, you're going to end up having to do a product rule. Uh, and then uh, you can do a, a similar type thing over here, like so. So writing this like here, and so we have a d by d theta, like so. Uh, and again, what this piece is, this piece is including uh, uh, sort of uh, this piece over here. And of course, I, I forgot to include it. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, but this, this piece over here too. So this piece includes this guy and this guy together. And, and the one piece I left out is this piece over here. So this piece, of course, should be written there. Uh, and that piece is the one that typically just doesn't. Only has it's basically the the derivative of phi, and so it only has one piece. And so you'll typically see this Laplacian, this like that, written out this way here. Um, all right. So again, I hope that helps. It can be really tricky, I think, getting back into the swing or just getting into the swing in general of spherical coordinates. But we'll work a lot of this in class too. Thanks.